Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Why am I back in Safari? This might not work. Hang on. It says you're streaming live on Facebook now. I just got that. Okay. All right, everybody. Hey, it's Liz. Hey, hey, hey. Here we are. Here we are. Okay. Uh, welcome to, um, hang on. Let me, uh, welcome to the um, Cooking with Liz holiday wrap party. This is super exciting. Hold on one second. I need to make sure I can see the other screen so I can see what I'm doing with my own with my own credits. Okay, this is the holiday wrap party, people. It's a party. This is party COVID style. Three people in two different places. Okay, so please, uh, I would like you to meet special guest mixologist, Colin Tridler. Thank you very much, Colin Tridler. He is accompanied by um, special guest taster, satellite sister, Leon Dolan is in the house. <laughs> This really feels like a cooking show. Yeah, yeah it's all set up. <laughs> I think there aren't enough drinking shows, maybe. Maybe, that, maybe that's the big takeaway. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, so Colin is going to make the, um, the signature cocktail you created, Colin, is called what again? Uh, the Five Sisters. The Five Sisters. Five that's, sisters. Really, that's very sweet of you. But the first thing we're gonna do is I am going to make the uh, Paloma Fizz because this is super easy. And a lot of people were very interested in a mocktail. And I really had fun looking at the various recipes and this one is delicious. So hang on, let me find the, where I put, got so many. This is, this is the beauty of cooking with Liz, see? <laughs> casual, you're really cooking with Liz. It's yeah. casual. So you're supposed to put it in a Tom Collins class which is like a tall skinny glass. I don't have a Tom Collins class, but I have a tall skinny flute. So that seemed good enough. Then your um, crushed ice. So I made my own crushed ice, you know, the old fashioned way. So got that, got the crushed ice. <laughs> right? So I'm just gonna, okay, I'll use a spoon and put the crushed ice in here. Your um your your fridge doesn't have an ice crusher, and I guess not. I guess no, it's, no. Too sleep. <laughs> okay, so we got that. Then, if you tuned in to my earlier um, mise en place, you saw me. This is a rosemary simple syrup that I made. Obviously, it smells delicious because it smells like rosemary. Mm. That sounds good, Liz. My sous chef just came in. Okay. Happy holidays, Susha. Okay. So let me see here. Okay, so this goes in. And then the pink grapefruit juice goes in. I love grapefruit juice. I, I love it. Me too. Yeah, Me too. I love it. It's, it's been like my number one new thing that I've gotten hooked on during the current unpleasantness. Mm -hmm. And then it said, it said you could use either seltzer or sparkling grapefruit soda. So I went with the fancy grapefruit soda. Do you guys ever drink this? The, as a mixer, Colin, have you used this? Yeah, their tonic water is like just the best tonic water. I'd okay. Well, sparkling pink grapefruit. So, okay, so I'm putting that in here. Oh, that looks beautiful. Wow. I love this, but wait, there's more. There always is. I'm excited to see. In the recipe, it calls for like a slice of grapefruit to go in. Huh. But I got hooked on Palomas this summer because there's a new restaurant in my neighborhood called Socolo. And they make they make the takeout Palomas, the ones with the booze or without the booze. Uh, but when you get a takeout Paloma, it comes with a little dried grapefruit. So oh. last night in preparation for today, I got myself a good looking uh, good <laughs> take out Paloma, but I saved this. So okay. it doesn't really fit in my glass. Don't break the glass, Liz. There you go. There you, that's thinking. Okay. Okay. Oh, beautiful. So this is the Paloma Fizz. That, that sounds delicious. How's it tasting? Really good. Yeah. Could even have a little more of the um, 
the rose. Oh, it's supposed to have more of the rosemary in it because that's in the recipe. You're supposed to do this. I didn't want to say it. I was going to correct you and say, you know, it would be nice if you put that sprig of rosemary. This is in the recipe, Leanne. It's a, I don't know. I don't have the recipe in front of me or the photo, so I forgot about that. But yeah, that's what makes it so special. You get the slice of the grapefruit and the rosemary. So, okay. So this is your Paloma Fizz. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So. Fantastic. That looks I'm going to just sip this. Now I'm turning the show over to Chief Mixologist Colin Tridler. Because right. now we're going to go into the five sisters. Wow. While we do this, I'm going to change this to speaker view. Whoop. And then once you start speaking, it will feature you. And then meanwhile, I'm going to make sure I can see what's happening in the Facebook group because I can't see that right now. So, okay, go for it, Colin Tradler. Yeah, perfect. So this drink is called the Five Sisters. Uh, I asked Liz and my mom what they wanted in a drink. And my mom said uh, nutmeg and champagne. And I was like, well, I know zero drinks <laughs> that have nutmeg and champagne in them. So like, I guess I'll just make one up. And in my Googling, I came across a recipe for another cocktail called the Long Hello, which had nutmeg and champagne and apple brandy in it. And I'm like, oh, well, that sounds interesting. Um, but I really like a lot of like historical liquors. Like I like a lot of history of cocktail cocktails. And so there's this old school spirit from the early days of America called Applejack, which is like essentially an apple brandy. So I thought I'd swap the apple brandy for Applejack in the long hello to create the five sisters. Oh, that's nice. Can I stop you for a second, Colin? Yeah, go ahead. I just want to make sure that people in the Facebook group can see this because the way I'm looking at my screen right now, it says the live video has ended. So if people are seeing it, could you, could you post a comment? And I'm going to take one quick look on my phone. Somehow, did I turn it off by accident? I've not gotten any notifications, but it is possible. So we can wait here for a second. Okay, yeah, just hang on one second. Almost every okay. holiday party I've been to has had technical difficulties. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's, it's still live. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. We're good. Okay. We're good. Carry on. Carry on. Um, also, if you went to the store to buy Applejack and you saw these two different kinds of bottles, the only yeah. difference is this one on the left is a little bit more historical and it's just a little bit more apple -y. You know, okay. as they say in the, on the bottle, this one has six pounds of apples and this one has 17 pounds of apples in the bottles, which is a lot of apples. That's a little hard to believe too. Yeah, I ended up with this one. The, the other one, which you had sent me the photo of, that they didn't have that. So yeah. I get this 17 pounds of apples. I guess that's good. It's gonna be a, a lot of apples. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The other ingredients in this is uh, St. Germain, which is just like a really floral liqueur. And we actually just happened to have a bottle. So it was even better timing when I found this recipe. Yeah, very impressive. What would you have used that for? I think this summer, I thought I was gonna try some various spritzers, like just to get out of my wine habit. And I didn't really, uh, so, okay. but I had the bottle. I think I had read a recipe somewhere. But also I wanted the nutmeg because we're from Connecticut and it's the nutmeg state. So that was the I think that was that was not something I knew before I began. This <laughs> yeah. So that's that's you're it. not from Connecticut. You're from California. So okay. All right, yeah. carry on, Colin. Yeah, and then the last ingredient is uh barrel aged bitters. Uh, I believe Liz, you have uh, Fee Brothers and mine's Peychaud's. But really, if it says barrel aged bitters on it, it it'll work for this recipe. You know what? I bought another one first uh, th that was just bitters, like aromatic, old-fashioned bitters. And yeah. then and I realized that you would specify barrel age. So what is the difference? Is there a different flavor profile, as mixologists like to say? Yeah, this one is definitely like a little bit more vanilla-y and sweeter-y. And then like sweeter. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so if you, have, if you have like the Angostura aromatic bitters, like it's just kind of funky. And this one like isn't that funky. It's okay. just like a nice, clean, sort of like sweeter, vanilla-y, like bourbon-y flavor. Okay. 
Vanilla E bourbon. -y. Okay. All right. I was surprised how many kinds of bitters there were. People, a lot. people were laying down a lot of There's comparative a lot bitters. Of bitters. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. And then when you start mixing a cocktail, you're always supposed to start with the cheapest ingredient first. So oh, really? if you mess up the ratio on the cheaper ingredients, like you're not wasting expensive liquor. That really yeah. makes sense when you put it that way. So yeah. I'm going to start with two dashes of the barrel aged bitters. Okay. Straight into a mixing glass. This isn't a cocktail that's shaken. It's a cocktail that's mixed. And then I'm going to go for the more apple-y. Applejack. Oh, good, because that's what I have, too. I think, yeah, we'll drink the same drink. And this is a pretty easy cocktail because the ratio is just three quarters of an ounce to three quarters of an ounce. So I can handle that. Going in. And then we're going to switch to the St. Germain. And once again, three quarters of an ounce. Lee and I like your fancy little crystal mixing pitcher there. Yes. This is Collins. He bought it. I, Liz, we don't make cocktails. We oh. had one bottle of tequila in our bar area for uh, 20 years. And uh, when the boys were in high school, we just put a napkin over it. That was the that was the sign that you had gotten busted into. No drinking. Napkin. <laughs> Check that napkin. So uh, I really didn't nice. have anything. Colin had to get all this stuff. Okay. He didn't even have glasses, really. So you're going to want to give that a quick stir. And like the way you know it's done is if you just hold your fingers to the side of the glass, you'll feel the glass get colder. And uh, this drink is served up in a coupe glass. A coupe. So you then strain the drink into the coupe. Okay. That's good. Uh, and then the exciting part, the champagne. Oh, I have to get my champagne out. Okay, when you're done, I'll get my champagne out of the fridge. Now, Colin's going to make this all again so you can make it at home. So this yeah. is just, he's just doing the first one and then, and then he'll do a mix along because we need two drinks. We do need two drinks. Yeah. And I didn't want to double the ratios. No. So I got my champagne out. Ready Obviously to something you can do. It could be fun to make a batch of these and then bring the champagne out and do the champagne like at the table if you had friends over Ooh. in a different year. Right. It's a nice touch though, with the, the Christmas uh, towel. Thank you. <laughs> got it all going on there. My Christmas. Well, that is cute. That is cute. It's sort of like the one I have. It's, all, it's the classic tree on a car. I guess that's what we do here. <laughs> okay. You just top this drink of champagne to however much you want. Well, that's good. <laughs> and then as a garnish over the top of the drink. Uh, we really looked at many stores for the fresh nutmeg to do the fancy grating. Oh. And we just couldn't find it. I don't know if it was just out of stock, like run on nutmeg after Thanksgiving, too many pies. But so normally you would grate it. Oh, okay. yeah, very nice. And then you're just sprinkling a little bit over the top and then serving it on a lovely Rudolph the <laughs> cocktail napkin. <laughs> And yeah, that's the drink. Wow. Pretty lovely. Well done. That oh. looks really nice. Really beautiful. Okay. Hang it's on. Just, Let me just... It's like pink and delicious, and it's fantastic. Uh, shall Let I send you a waste of toast while you guys make your second? Yeah, yeah. we'll make the second one. So okay. I just want to read you some of the comments. There are people already saying this is the highlight of their day. Uh, Jennifer, who we know is in Maine, said classic New England Christmas theme towel. Uh, let's see. Applause from Sue. Clap, clap, clap from Karen. Okay, so people are really, you know, they are digging it. Uh, okay, so, so, so great to see Colin. Nice mixology. Okay, bravo, Colin. Okay, so now, now I'm going to make mine and you're going to coach me through it, right? And I'm going to get fresh ice in mine. So one second. Okay. All right, while he's gone, I'm going to say one thing. 
This is kind of a secret favorite champagne that I like, this Gruet. It's from New Mexico. Who knew? Oh, uh, but it's a very reasonably priced uh, sparkling wine. Sorry, no comments. It's not a champagne. It's a sparkling <laughs> wine from New Mexico. I know we have quite a few listeners in New Mexico, so I love this. And they have a beautiful rosé champagne too. So look for that. That is a very nice holiday drink. Okay. Okay, hang on a second. Paul, let me catch up with you. So, okay, so I've got my fees. Okay, go to the top to that. All right. So two, two, so two, right? Yep. Okay. You gave it a good dash there, though, Colin. You yeah, really, you really hit it. You really hit it. Okay, maybe I'll. Yeah. I just need to eyeball it a little more. <laughs> Okay, so so that's in my mixing glass. Yeah. What's next? Uh, the Applejack. The Applejack. So here's my, this is quite a lot of Applejack. I don't. Quite a lot of Applejack. I'm gonna, can I make pies with this or anything? Okay. I mean, you can so, drop, it should be delicious. So how much of this, this is three quarters of an ounce, right? Three quarters of an ounce. Everything's three quarters of an ounce. I have to eyeball that a little bit because one ounce is the first marker on my thing. But okay, so there's a little bit less than one ounce is going in there. This is so fun. I hope people at home are having fun doing yeah. it. I'm enjoying okay. watching both of you. <laughs> okay, and this is the most beautiful bottle. It is. So, yeah. so also three quarters of an ounce with this, right? Three quarters of an ounce of St. Germain. Okay, eyeballing that. There we go. How are people doing at home? You doing okay with this? All right, three quarters. Oh, and then there's some. I saw that. I didn't want to alert you to. It was, it was some of the plastic from the top of one of the bottles. Okay, so that goes in. I would not recommend that as a garnish. <laughs> no, make drinks how you want to make drinks. <laughs> no proper way. Okay, is there anything else going in? Now I'm just mixing it. Now we're just mixing it. I do not have a big, fancy mixer pitcher the way you do. And I'm using a chopstick. I, I thought this was the most festive color to go with my outfit. Yes. And that should be good. It's enough mixing. Okay. And now I do not have a strainer, but you said I could use a spoon. Just, yeah, anything to keep the ice back. Because my my only other choice was this, and that's Liam disallowed this, people. <laughs> okay, because of course, cooking with Liz without any coaching would have just gone with that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna strain this into here. Yeah, that's correct. Wow, it smells so good. Yeah, it's a very floral smell, and like. You get apples too. Apple absolutely delicious. Very apple. It smells like 17 pounds of apples. <laughs> okay. So I just want to show people this. So here's what I have so far. And as I posted earlier, I have a dozen of these. I they were obviously at Nadolin's. Yes. You know, not something I ever purchased. And I asked if these were like sherbet dishes or champagne coupes, and somebody posted that it's the same that she had a wedding set that was exactly like this. Oh, they are beautiful. Liz. Yeah. Okay. If you, if you'd like some Lee, and I don't think I'm ever going to use a dozen of these. Okay. All right. So now we got this far. Now, what do I do? We're topping with the champagne now. Okay. I could have done some of this in advance, but it's so much more dramatic. Oh, far more dramatic. When we're doing it live. I can now that you mention, Mom, we always have at every party uh, pepper from goldfish in honor of uh, Edna Dolan because she always had a little stash in a little bowl at every family event. And uh, I was given this nut bowl one time um, to speak at an event. And, and I was like, ooh, nut bowl. And so now it's always filled with pepper from. Okay, the goldfish bowl. That's nice. Yeah, the silver tray I have right here. This is also an Edna Dolan tray. I think I mentioned that. Okay, so here's my towel. One thing Jim Dolan did, he was he was always very good about teaching us how to open a champagne bottle. Yeah. Every time, every time he opened a bottle of champagne, he would say, "Remember, 
turn the bottle, not the cork. So I have always been really good at this. <laughs> this is a dramatic line. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Out, huh? Yeah. I, was I know I'm supposed to, not supposed to make the face if I was like in service in a very in a fine dining establishment, the face would not. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so now Colin, I've got this and I just top this. Oh my God, this is gonna be delicious. Don't, don't forget the nutmeg, Liz. Hold on. Yeah. Got to get the nutmeg. I always have to forget one thing. I know. That's why mine was sort of a mid-level, real okay. champagne, Laurent Perrier, but you know, the, okay, so there's that. And where did I put, okay. Ground nutmeg. 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 And yeah, and then just, you know, tap it, sprinkle it over the top. You don't need too much nutmeg. Yeah, I think a little bit of nutmeg goes a long way. It smells like really good as you're like as you're drinking, you're getting the aroma of nutmeg, and it just it smells nice. It's very nice. Okay, so I got that. Oh, that's that, a oh, that's a lot. That's of nutmeg. A lot. <laughs> Ample. Okay. Ample. That's nutmeg. definitely enough. Oh, there you go. That's a good idea. I'm gonna remove a little. Okay, that's a good. It's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I thought when you did it, it looked like you put a lot in. That's why I did, but okay. Oh, All right. Very, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just tapping as I'm doing it. Oh, that. okay. Yeah. This is why I have a mixology coach. How would I have known that? Um, okay. Well, thank you, Colin, for this first lesson. So we're yeah. each going to take a sip. And our toast here on Cooking with Liz is, of course, peace and sauce. Wow. wow, really delish. That is so tasty. <laughs> mm. You know what? It has very complex flavors. Yes. I, it, oh, hang on. I think this is, you know, I think this is an elevated <laughs> cocktail for sure. Elevated cocktail. Maybe that's what bitters do. Like it, add, it has a sort of, that I expected it to be like apple and nutmeggy, but it's, this is deep, Colin. This is yeah. deep. That was my exact reaction when I had it. I like, we made it for the first time last week to test it out. And I tried and I was like, oh, oh, that's got, like, mm. we're moving through this. Yeah, There's... yes, it's levels. This has levels. Okay. And I admit, I like a little sparkle in my cocktails. So like, mm -hmm. I am not, a, I'm never going to order a martini. I like things that have a little bit of fizz. I find yeah. that. Yeah, so that's yeah, me too. Though I would never have ordered something like this, but I'm so glad I know about it. Okay, I'm gonna go back. It on a menu, like it's not a like it's not a very popular cocktail. Let's <laughs> see if there are any other comments here. Uh, Sue says so tasty. Oh good. Imagine. Okay, peace and sauce to everyone. Oh, we have 217 comments already. Danette says we are noticing Leon's bowl. That is a cocktail. So okay. <laughs> This, yeah, these are really large. We just, yeah. again, we had to go buy these at Macy's. So, because uh, I didn't have <laughs> classes. We, and we looked at two or three stores and then this was it. So this is yeah. what we bought, but it, you're right, Danette, it's very large. Yeah. So, yeah. Champagne to your preference. Because right. if we topped this, it'd be a lot of champagne. Yeah, yeah. but I like, to, I like a lot of champagne. Yeah. So it's probably a little bit, yeah. Okay, but remember, I asked you to post your toasts in the group, so I want to just run through some of the great Satellite Sisters and Misters toasts we got. That's Carol. Oh, and Carol is saying new lighting for me. Well, you know, I did put up some holiday lighting, and then I have a little more lighting on my face, but Leon and Colin have a whole professional setup there that you can't see. So they sort of encouraged me. When I saw what they were doing, production end on their end, uh, I like, I did go with a little fancier lighting than usual. Okay. So, uh, okay, I'm just reading some of the comments here. So Colin should come again, yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna read some of the toasts and then remember it's it's a wrap party. So there's a wrap gift I have to, I have to open. So don't go away before I get to the wrap gift. Oh, festooning in the kitchen, Linda says, that's so funny. Yes, I think there's some reckless festooning. 
Okay, so here are some of the posts that we got in the group. So Jamie said, this is a classic. Several of you posted this. There are good ships and wood ships, ships that sail the sea, but the best ships are friendships. May they always be. That seemed like a super Satellite Sisters one to me, Liam, didn't it? I, it's good, but I think you should not have any drinks before you try to spit that out in public because that, that ships, so many ships. <laughs> so it's that's all I'm saying now. That's a pretty good toast. <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, Christy said, my husband and I were married on New Year's Eve. At midnight, we toasted our guests with, may your troubles last as long as your New Year's resolutions. So that's a good one. They're celebrating 23 years in 2020. Good oh, for you. Congratulations. The, um, let's see. Oh, Debbie, this was a nice one. Debbie said she would like to toast her sister, Norma, and wish her a, a very happy 2021. Their mom and dad have both passed away, and they now just have each other in their memories. And they both love Satellite Sisters and listen every week, even though they're 1,500 miles apart. Oh, and that's Debbie. Norma. Norma. We love hearing from you. Kathleen says, let's just all be happy enough in 2021. Amen, sister. Now we have several languages that I'm going to attempt. Excellent. Uh, okay. Happy, this was my father's favorite was Salud, Pesetas y Amor y el Tiempo para Gustarlos, which means health, wealth, and the time to enjoy them. Oh. How did that sound, Colin? You took Spanish in school. Did that sound okay? It's been about eight years, so <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I don't speak Spanish, so I thought it was pretty good for some. Thank you, Liam. Thank you. Yes, I've never taken Spanish, but you know, I live in Los Angeles, so you you pick up a lot just around town. Okay, Becky said my maternal grandpa was Polish, and this toast is said at every family gathering on her mom's side, usually with blackberry brandy. So that's good. And if na zdrowoga, no, that's not good. Na. Nostrovia. Yeah, Nostrovia. That's it. It means to help. Yeah. yeah, you see that on TV now that you say that out loud. Okay. Um, Kathleen says, to those we lost, our love and prayers, to those we will see in 2021, we look so forward to it. Slancha. And okay. Slancha is the Irish. We got a lot of slanches. But that's that's beautiful, Kathleen. That actually, actually, that makes me a little emotional. Okay, Larice is an Italian. A traditional Italian toast is Sant'Anne or a hundred years. I love this story. This is a good one. I had never heard this toast. Tell the story. Oh, no. so it says, as in, may you live a hundred years. As the last pandemic was a hundred years ago, it seems weirdly appropriate. But I think I would like to say something like, may you live 100 years, but not another one. Was that it? Was that the story you wanted? Yeah, I like just sent on. I had never heard that. A hundred yeah. years. A yeah. hundred years. Sent on. Nice. Thank you, Luis. Okay. Enough. That would is that's enough, as our mother would have said. A hundred years. That's enough. <laughs> Enough. Okay, Cheryl is saying she loves my festive earrings. Leon was asking about my earrings too. Sheila gave me these for my birthday about three years ago. And they're so heavy, Cheryl, that I only wear them like on nights like tonight when I'm just standing in my kitchen. If I was out all night, probably not so much. But I thought they were perfect for tonight. So thank you for noticing. Okay. Even the carrots, Liz Bickled, I put those out. They're powerful. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so Diane's toast is let's celebrate every little thing, sisters. So love that. Karen said, we can do hard things, things that we thought were impossible in March. That's true too. Luann says to love, laughter, and happily ever after. And she gave that at her sister's wedding. That's very nice. Debbie Hahn reminds us that, of course, the toast from Princess Bride is to the death, so, okay. Fair, my husband's favorite movie. Which I always confuse with The Princess Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Bride is Barrack's fa favorite movie? That's great. Yeah. Okay, now here is Martha. This I thought was, you, you can really only say this one this year, stay positive, test negative. That's her toast, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, 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 Martha, cheers. Cheers. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Maggie always, they wrap all their family toast with here's to us, slancha. This one was a good one. Judy says, let's make a toast to something highly contagious. Kindness, enthusiasm, love, and a positive attitude. Don't wait to catch it from others. Be a carrier. Oh, strong. That is good writing, Judy. Very nice. Very strong, Judy. Uh, Amanda says, cheers to all the parents out there who've had to teach their kids reading and common core math. I've never been more content to have teenagers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Really. cheers. Eileen says, cheers to the grocery store workers who kept us fed during the pandemic. Yes, and still are keeping us fed. Um, Aaron says, to help and family and friends. And, you know, Aaron lives in China, and I've noticed that she was throwing a big party there in China earlier this week. Okay. Now, Terry's going in another direction. Terry says, I'm going to take out my glass for this. Terry says, here's to you and here's to me. If we should ever disagree, the hell with you and here's to me. So, okay. <laughs> Good one, Terry. And then they are, oh, Betsy, Betsy, I really like this one. Can I just say this about the nutmeg? I like that you get it in every sip, right? You yeah. Are you getting that little nutmeg, little hit of nutmeg every time? Okay, sorry, Liz. Hey, you know, Colin, somebody asked, um, can you imagine a non-alcoholic version of this drink? That's a tough one, but you it's could do Because all of the ingredients are alcohol. Yeah. But you yeah. could put in the ginger ale, you know, and apple juice would probably yeah. be close. And then something floral. I don't know what that floral would be. But yeah, if you do like ginger ale, apple juice or apple cider, and then if you could find like a flower of some kind, that would yeah. be right. like something close. Yeah. Because there's got to be a way you can do uh, the, what is this again? Elderberry? Yeah, elderflower, I believe. Elderflower. There must be a non-alcoholic version of that. So yeah, that's a good thing to experiment with. People out there who wanted to try that. I would love to, if you figure that out. Oh, Natalie says there's an elderflower syrup. So oh, yeah. you could definitely yeah. do that. Yeah, that would definitely work then. Because you definitely get the elderflower, you get the sweetness. Yeah. You need that. It's, that's an important ingredient. That elderflower. Right. And then that suggests maybe, maybe rose water. You could put rose water in there. Rose water would work. No. Yeah. And Brenda says, thanks for this fun COVID free holiday party. I know. Thank you, Brenda. We're having fun too. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't like rose as a flavor. I'm you just don't? Gonna, I'm gonna, uh, no rose for me as a flavor. <laughs> okay. No rose for Lee, and you heard it here first. Um, I'm against rose. I mean, I love rose. You know, yeah. I live in the city of roses. Like, roses <laughs> are my thing, but as a flavor, no thanks. Only as a flavor, completely cut out of my mouth. <laughs> okay. Nancy Fisher says IKEA sells the elderflower syrup. So okay, there you go. You can get right on that. Get on the blower to IKEA people. Um, okay, that's Liz's signature. <laughs> get on the blower. Yeah. 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 Colin, you don't realize because you're not a regular viewer of Cooking with Liz, but you know you have to have your signature catchphrases. So I've been, I've been working on a few. Getting on the blower. I own that. Don't even think about stealing. I won't do it at all. <laughs> okay, Susan says, cheers to all my long distance friends I reconnected with because we've all been home. That's true. That is something yeah. that happened this yeah. year. Um, the Here's another Irish dressing, uh, Irish blessing. Um, May your troubles be less and your blessing be more and nothing but happiness come through your door. Followed by slancha, of course. Uh, Betsy, oh, did I say this one? Because I liked this one. Because you got to think ahead, people. Um, cheers to shots and crowded airplanes in 2021. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Jennifer says, Lee, and she's the same. She doesn't like the rose water. Thank you, Jennifer. I mean, it's not, it's not a good place. I don't even like it as a fragrance. Like, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> There's okay. a lot of rose facial products and it's not working for me. So, but I love roses. So. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up with two of these toasts and then it's time to open the wrap party <laughs> gift for, for, for myself. We can't wait okay. to see what it is. I, well, 
I'm going to be really surprised, even though I wrapped it. Um, okay, this was a very thoughtful one from Sandy that did make me tear up a little bit when I first read it. But I think this is a moment. It's nice we can be together, even in this strange way. So I want to share this. And she said, when our family gathers, maybe next year at Thanksgiving, but this is what they do in their family, when everyone is seated and before we eat, my aunt lights a candle in honor and memory of those who are absent. And we raise our glasses to each other because we're so happy to be together. So that's, that's very sweet. That's just beautiful. That's, you know, this is a very special year to think about, you know, just how hard it is to be together and how much, how, how much we miss the people, some of them absent just for this year, some of them absent forever. So thank you, Sandy, for that one. And then I'm going to end on a high note, as they say in showbiz, go out on a high note. Lisa Porter says, here's to cooking with Liz next year on tour okay <laughs> cheers. cheers cheers thank you awesome. yeah. okay well, I right. what that would look like the cooking with liz tour <laughs> <laughs> i just i yeah. just love the idea that there's more to learn land Remember? I, I think that's it it's all about the learning maybe i could go into other people's kitchens and they could teach me how to do things that's what I think. It's very, it's going to be very low tech, but in yeah, a yeah. Way, I, yeah, I think that's it. I think it's, yeah. As, as I said, if I thought cooking with Liz was going to go on this long, I would have given it a better title yeah. and it would have been something more along the line. Like Liz learns a few things, you know, <laughs> it's not cooking with Liz is, Oh, follow me people. No, do, but for God's sakes, do not follow me. I almost didn't even remember the rosemary sprig. I forget one key ingredient every damn time, but, but I could just go to people's homes and you could teach me your favorite thing. So a huge idea. And I just want to forward promote this week's show. We have uh, Wanya Lucas coming on. She's the CEO of the Hallmark channel. Okay. She's a former colleague, Liz. I feel that is a pitchable idea. <laughs> but you just pitch if you only concentrated on going into the homes of Hallmark Channel stars, because they do seem to be kind of a super closed family. Hey. I have noticed that. Like, you know, it's the same cast of characters in movies, shows, everything. So that I think that's a big idea. Went into there. And so many of the characters are cupcake bakers. Oh. <laughs> right. That's always seems to be their job in whatever movie they're in. Like their profession, cupcake baking. Yeah. Liz. And uh, so you could really do that. So there are okay. a whole, there are a whole wars fought over cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me get my wrap gift and then we can wrap. Yeah. So um you know, at the end of the summer season, I, I gave myself a wrap gift and it was something that I really wanted. You may, if you were watching, you may recall that I got a pizza stone and that was something that I felt like my kitchen was lacking and that I could work with a little bit. So this is my um, wrap gift just for the holiday season because I've learned a whole bunch of different things during the holiday season than I learned during this summer season. So let's just see what I have here. Okay, hang on. Let's see. I, I'm shocked Liz wrapped because she's never brought a wrap gift to our house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you ever recall that? I like a bag and tissue. Paper. Okay. It's easy. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, what do I need more than a pizza stone? I need a fire extinguisher. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. There, there was an episode not too long ago where I continued doing something else, but the burners were still going. I, Leanne, were you here for that? I was there, Liz. I saw it. You were like, yeah. oh. And they, there was some, some um, yeah, some hot pads dangerously close. <laughs> some fabric, yes. Liz, that's oh. a good gift for you. So I do. Thank you. I thought it would be... Yeah, I thought it was a good gift for me. There is a fire extinguisher, as I mentioned in that episode, right outside the tasting window on the wall in my building's courtyard, because that's the law in California. There are fire extinguishers all over. But I thought if I was really on fire in here, which is 
not that hard to imagine. Am I really going to remember to run out into the courtyard? No. So now I have my own fire extinguisher in my kitchen. So I can keep cooking for a long time now. That you know, cooking cocktails this time on cooking with Liz too. What? So we'll just light stuff up. Flaming cocktails. <laughs> Flaming cocktails. Okay. Maybe New Year's Eve. I am going to need to book you again, Colin. Flaming cocktails. Okay. All right. So yeah. Wow. That was exciting to get a fire extinguisher. Okay. Let me do one more check back to the Facebook group to comment. And then we might have to wrap this wrap party. So um, let's see. Uh, Betsy says, I think Liz going to different people's kitchens is a great show idea. Okay, Betsy, that's fine. I, like we can make that happen. And uh, every kitchen needs one. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. I'm All right. For a fire extinguisher, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> it needs a list. Okay, so um, so Colin, as our chief mixologist and really the star of tonight's show, are there any thoughts you want to leave people with about about flavors and mixology and just how you arrive at what your favorites are? Because this was something where you saw an existing recipe, but you you know changed it a little bit. So parting words from our mixologist. Just, uh, there's no such thing as like a proper drink. So find a drink you like and then change it until you like it more than any other drink. Oh, that's okay. what I would say. So okay. if you want to call an old fashioned an old fashioned, you can, even if it has none of the same ingredients <laughs> as a traditional old fashioned. Just do whatever you want. Okay. Do whatever you want. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I've spent the entire year on cooking with Liz trying to just follow the recipe. And now all the people with actual skills just say, do whatever you want. <laughs> Should have, drinks are easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Slancha, Colin, Leon, and yeah. everyone out there watching, again. All, right. so all the Satellite Sisters and Misters, thank you. This was fun. Our this first was really fun. Party. You know, it's been a... It's been a crazy year for all of us. It's been on Satellite Sisters, it's been an unusual year, but we are so happy we could all be together here or some of us be together in this kind of weird way with the help of Colin Tridler, you know, making it a party. Thank you, Colin. Cheers, peace and sauce. Peace, peace and sauce, people, peace and sauce.